Well, yes, they did. We're, we're got a guest who is going to take us through some of the papers that we've got for you this morning. He's right here with us in the studios. Uh, Dr. Ben Owodinjo, good morning and thank you for coming on today. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, well, we are doing what we have to do <laughs> moving <laughs> forward. So, uh, interestingly, your, your PhD is in public policy, so that may speak to some of the issues that we have on hand this morning. And we're going to start with Vanguard newspaper. And uh, the lead story on the front page of Vanguard tends to reflect what several people have been talking about for a while. So, look at that. Hardship. More Nigerians opt for loans to make ends meet. Let me read some of the writers. Uh, the first of which says, consumer loans up 34% as inflation. Naira depreciation eat up households' income. Banks deploy digitization, product diversification to address demand. Persistent price increase drives households to banks for borrowing, ascribed to analysts. Now, I don't know what part of this is new for you because uh, this economic challenge, uh, I've been talking about it for a while, but driving Nigerians to banks for loans, this is something that ordinarily you wouldn't see several people do because they know. How would they... But at this stage, is it that it will be difficult to think about the interest rate first before you go? Just go get it first and survive and then think about the payback later. Thank you very much. Now, when you talk about loans, the other way is, one thing is loan, another thing is ability to pay the loans back. Ability to ensure that these loans, that there are structures to generate income, generate profit, to be able to pay the loans back. Now, the... The pursuit of loans in a fragile economy like this shows that people have not got much choice because ordinarily, if people have choice, they won't, do, they won't go for loans. Before they give you loan, you have to have a lot of collateral, a lot of processes that are even more stringent. So that kind of pursuit is a pointer to the fact that the economy is down and people are not finding it funny. It goes back to the public sector. What are they doing to cushion the effect of poverty, suffering in the society? that makes people to go for loans that will end up as recurrent expenditure in their lives. So first of, for, as far as I'm concerned, th those pursuit of loan at a, at a micro level is just a survival strategy. They get the loans, use the loans to even eat, use the loans to run businesses that will not even succeed in the long run. Well, here it says consumer loans are up 34% as inflation, narrow depreciation, eats up household income. So now they're borrowing to make ends meet. They are borrowing so to eat. not even to finance no. any business or That is where the problem lies. They are borrowing to oil their lives. Not to invest in things that will even bring profit. Because the, the idea of loan is in the first instance is to have some facilities that will make them be able to also help in driving the economy at a macro level. The people are looking for loan to be able to enable them even sustain themselves. I want to get a loan that enable me pay my school fees, school fees of my I want to get a loan for my company. Meanwhile, the original concept is to even be able to pay loans, pay house rent, run expenditures, which are not supposed to be like that. So it's a, it's a pointer to a challenge, a disconnect in, this, in the status quo and in terms of the economy. So those, who run, those but, running the economy at the macro, macro level to re-strategize. If not, it will be a question of getting loans, getting uh, loans that don't end up the, the economy at the macro level. So where do you place all of that argument back and forth as to government approach in terms of uh, palliatives, giving people what some sort of money for trade or giving them palliatives to food stuff and things like that. So is it that after all it is relevant? No, no. Government palliative is nothing you know, apart from what we call it we, we call it symbolic value. If you are waiting for government to give you palliative to sustain your life and stuff, it is simply the mantra of this government is renewed hope. They didn't say renewed money, renewed economy, hope. So that palliative is to keep giving you hope, keep giving you the symbolic value, and keep hoping that you keep hoping, hoping the, this one will, this, uh, this administration will, this government will go, another one will come. They give another thing again, palliative. What is palliative? Let me give an example from my place. There's a state in, in this Nigeria where the palliative, this palliative is about. 1,000 naira and one mood of rice. I have to bring up this. So that, if you bring government... Some states are doing that. 
I should mention the name. Yeah, of course. State. I was on one t in the television station and people called in in Abuja here and they said in their state, all these whole ideas of politics. I'm from Akbu Gezi. The politics is a 200 bags of rice for almost 1,000 people. So then, then what is palliative? It is simply a deep structure, a deep structure kind of symbolic value, just to t tell you that we are doing something. So if you hope on that palliative, then we even dismiss. It is, it is not, government is, remember, government is drama. Government is performance. Government is acting, theater. So they just keep performing, acting, telling you this, rubbing, rubbing, rubbing you, rubbing you cream. No. Are you saying that's what they do as opposed to what they're, what they're supposed to do? That's what government is all about in the, across, across the whole world. Drama. Drama. I don't understand that part. Government is performance. If you look at classics, the classical literature, government is a, uh, go, governance started from classical literature, drama. They, they perform, they try to make you understand, they, 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 they pretend. People read, you are a journalist, people read press conferences. That's what they are saying, it's not what they want to do. They, they, they have given you another perspective, they have given you another notion. They, 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 are not, they tell you at surface structure, they don't tell you at deep structure. So the government all over the world is drama. On portrait in Nigeria, the performance should be the interest of the masses. But here is mainly prebendal. So when government gives awards contract to construct roads, to build hospitals, to ensure they bring in, reflects the economy, that's all drama. Drama. Why? Because mm. if a government gives you contract, the original the surface structure that they want to they no, 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 not giving you contract, doing just seeing that being done. So at the end of the day, all that boils down to drama for you. Simple. Oh. I can give okay. you another perspective. Okay, we'll have several papers. Okay. So maybe when we get to those other <laughs> There'll be more drama. Let's see if there's to more see. drama in, yes. those, in those ones. <laughs> well, I can tell you that Mr. is suddenly getting dramatic. Oh, okay. Well, this I, morning. I think at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. is getting dramatic with Mrs. this morning. Do you mind if I take it? Sure, why not? I know it's a Monday morning, but I can't help it. And we're talking about food, so hey, why not? Yeah. Um, and Mr. goes, I'm amazed at how expensive Titus fish is. In the past, people shunned it. They believed it was for the poor. Okay? <laughs> so Titus fish, just in case you're wondering, is also the fish they call mackerel, right? Uh, but in Nigeria, it's popularly called Titus. So Mrs. says, is that why you're not eating it? And Mr. says, I don't like the way the fish head is grinning at me with the expression, who is now a poor man? <laughs> oh, that can be said with drama. <laughs> that so certainly is that drama. That one is understandable. That is Mr. looking at the fish and... You know, attributing <laughs> what he doesn't want, what he shouldn't be attributing to the fish's uh, face. It's a dead fish, for God's sake, cooked at that. Well, look at uh, this one. It's directly related to food. And uh, this Nigeria simply saying, crash food prices now. Nigerians urge Tinubu as inflation bites harder. Cost of tomatoes, rice, yam, gari increased by 19.48%. 8.24%, 11.21% respectively in one month. Okay? So those, these four items, tomatoes, rice, yam, dairy increased by 19.48%, almost 20%, 8.24%, almost 10%, and 11.21%. Uh, demand aggressive promotion of agricultural produce. So this is... Uh, this Nigeria, you know, trying to echo the cries of many Nigerians that the federal government has to find a way to crush the price of food. Uh, I don't know when public policy is being thought about. Do you think that this is one of the things, from what you have seen so far, do you think that food is really playing a top priority in, in terms of some of the things that we've seen so far? No, I don't think so. Let me go back to what I said before. I said it's drama. If you say crush crash the food the question is who will crash it how it boils down to producing those foods most of the people that are supposed to produce the food are not going to do that because of what insecurity what are the what, what are the parameters for producing the food in terms of agriculture where are, where are, who, who, who is doing that so these people who are saying these things are simply echoing their needs it will stay there it will stay there it will not go anywhere Which, if you say government we know, we know what is government now who is government who is going to do this thing now? So there's a difference between surface structure. Surface structure is what I want to do. Another one is 
Who is do? Who is going to do it? Put it to math. Put it arithmetics. It will still be like this now. Cost of food will, will keep increasing. Cost of everything will keep increasing. What are the indices to show that it will reduce? None. So is that to suggest that when you try to vie for elected position, you were also going there to act drama? Yes. You I, were going to act yes, drama. I contested for this post of Enugu State Governor, 2018. It's drama. Act drama. Yes. Wow. I have to tell you the truth of the matter. Drama that has no impact on the lives of the people. Because the, even drama, I mean, theatre has a purpose. Sometimes uh, entertain, to teach people. There are many reasons why people do drama. Uh, so if the drama doesn't have any impact on the lives of the people, then there are big questions. Now, the challenge in this country is that the drama should have been to act. So the purpose should have been for the interest of the masses. But here is the, is, is the problem. That's why we have a problem. Elsewhere, people act. People have purpose for the masses. It's a different thing. That's, that's, that's why you are seeing this type of right up. So yeah. our own is drama without purpose. Free vandalism. That's the problem. Okay. Yes. Well, that's the lead headline on the front page of um, uh, this Nigeria. They have a number of other stories right here. FCTA to review security architecture in Abuja. Who knows? If they do that, maybe we'll be able to farm. Uh, because food is expensive it. now. I can't afford anybody <laughs> dramatizing with my food. <laughs> if you have people who are hungry, how can you se secure the, the people? People come from the suburbs. They're looking for food. You can make somebody to go haywire. I mean, somebody go and steal. Now, if you can't even feed, you, 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 what, what, what food are you talking about? Mm. If there is no, those who are supposed to be, do, to be farming are looking for white collar jobs, are looking for contracts, are looking, uh, they want to be big men. That, I, that aspect of security, if it's not there, which is not there now, you, see, you keep seeing this type of, of headlines. Well, let's leave it there for this Nigeria. It's certainly good to see you back, Kayode. It seems like you've been gone for so long, almost like a, I said. I I could have sworn that he was away on maternity leave. I didn't know oh. better. But hey, Kayode and I over to you now. What do I know? Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ouch. Well, as I said, I'm when you feel here. here. Everywhere, you, you oh. know, everywhere. But, but it's, it's great to be your, back. Talked about your heart the other time. I'm feeling everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to be back. I definitely did not see this drama angle coming into the conversation uh, this morning. But take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Let's see if you think this is also some sort of drama. By the way, while that may give some insight into the maybe thought process of politicians, I hope it doesn't reinforce the acting of that drama. But see the headline on the front page of the Guardian. Banks brace for new monetary policy conduct and regulation. And you can see the picture of a CBN governor there as Cardoso returns CBN to traditional monetary policy regime. There are a few highlights of the speech he gave at that CIBN dinner. I'm tempted to ask if this also, if you think this is also part of some bigger drama being played. But as we said, this concerns the lives of Nigerians. And I wonder of what you make of this new policy direction it will seem uh, from the CBN. Thank you very, thank you very much. I will, still stick, I will still continue what I'm saying. I'm saying, it's a drama. The new CBN governor has to say, 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 say things. Banks brace for new monetary policy. They have to say new things. They have to bring monetary policies. But at the end of it all, to what extent does it influence, to what extent does it impact positively on the masses. Look at the indices in Nigeria. Poverty rate, lack of food, lack of that. So make policies. It is still drama. The new president, the, the new chair, the CBN governor has to bring policies that, first of all, protect the interests of the, of, of the elite. But now, I said it somewhere else that if you look at the policies we have in Nigeria, the problem is that those who sit in high offices make policies from their own prison. They don't carry the masses. They don't look at the interests of the masses where, why capturing and the structuring policies. So these things we see, for me, not only, gram, not only, only drama, but grammar. We have drama and grammar. Have you been able to carry the masses? Have you been able to look at the interests of the masses? It's not, a, it's not rocket, rocket science for why Nigerian policies fail. People still sit in the offices and, look, and see from their point of view and these are, these are policies. Split the grammar, draw charts, histogram, buy charts, I don't know if it all, it amounts to literal nothing. 
Otherwise, why are we so poor in Nigeria? Why are people suffering? So, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty of breaking down economic jargon. Right. How extent does it affect the Nigerian masses positively? It is as little as possible. Well, some may also ask if it is not just you projecting your own intentions for going into politics or governance on others who are currently in governance. And I imagine that some also uh, agree with you on that point. There are a couple of more headlines on the front page of The Guardian, but I'll just speak this one. Cool scare. Sierra Leone declares curfew as ECOWAS condemns plot. Ah, well, that's what you have there. It's a story you'll find on page three of The Guardian. Perhaps you might want to speak to that subsequently, but we'll leave it there for The Guardian newspaper. Look at uh, the front page of the leadership newspaper this morning. Um, and it, well, this has to be impactful drama. I mean, um, local government autonomy, that's what it's talking about. 313 out of 774 councils run by sole administrators. Only 20 states have elected local government executives. Non-compliant governors have no timetable for LG elections. I mean, it's gladdening to know that at least you wanted to be a governor of uh, a state before. So this must come to you in some way. What is your thinking of this and why do you think it is so? There are many who believe that there is no reason for, no provision for sole administrators in the local government, in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And now this. Thank you very much. If you have, in a supposed democracy, Nigeria is running a democracy, and then you have sole administrators, they are not democratically bound to deliver the, the democracy dividends. So, if you look at that, you find out that the issue is that there is a, a, there is a military aspect of it. Let me say there is a high-handed aspect of it. If you run sole administrators, that means the primary essence of democracy is to imbibe in the people the spirit of fairness, equity, justice, and the popular, uh, popular appeal. Then you are not doing that. The, the social administrators will be able to imply that they will they are, they are, they are ruling by fiat, by on the on, on, on the mercy of somebody else. So, if people have little confidence, little trust in the delivery process of a, a social administrator of, of a system, they can't even trust you to the extent that whatever you do, they will misunderstand you. And the, the end of it all will be that Nigeria will still keep underperforming will keep remaining as sleeping giants, sleeping, snoring elephants. What is the point of having solar administrators? Why don't you have the... the is, is it in the constitution that I have to have, have a, a solar administrator? Do the correct things. Why? Because some of the governors want to control the, solar, control the local government areas. And, the, the, and the, in, they want to, in the next election, they want to make sure that they use the instrument of these administrators to win elections. No. Lib liberalize the environment, let things go properly, and you have the country doing well. If at the, if at the last, last aspect of the, of the tiers of government, there is no democracy, then it's not correct. And uh, the, yeah, take a look at Daily Trust next. 5.6 billion a week project scam. ex nurse boss arrested 11 months after sacking. Nurse is the Nigeria incentive-based risk-sharing system for agricultural lending. And I say it's nabbed for lobbying for, no, nabbed lobbying for reappointment. Bolts away 32 official vehicles. No comments. Yes, yes. Or maybe you could say, well, this arrest, I know it's said to be drama, drama, but it may be dramatic, but this is real. It is actually dramatic. You know why? Because have you not seen it? Are you a journalist? Have you not seen it in Nigeria whereby most of these figures will end up not will end up being exaggerated? Well, uh, the, uh, you mean, I don't know. No, I'm uh, telling you from my, I'm a politician too myself. I'm saying at the end of it, we have seen it. Uh, we want to give, give examples. The government may want to achieve a purpose, and they don't like you again. They level level something against you. The moment they achieve their, their aim now, the issue dies off. It well, is still drama. I thought that if you're arrested, the lawyers and the prosecution will do their job. They will bring up charges against you. 
It can be humongous charges, however amount of charges they want to bring, but then I get to court. If they're able to prove it, yes. If not, no. I thought that's how it works. Do, do you know that it is even better to conclude the evidence first before you arrest somebody? But here, you arrest you first, put in the, in the, in the dungeon, and start looking for evidence. So at the end of it, people don't trust, even if they are doing the correct thing, people don't trust the system because they know that it can be an instrument of witch hunt. I don't like you now, I bring out stuff against you, punish your image, destroy your image, and put you away. The moment I achieve that M, maybe I don't want you to be here. I will say something against you, put you away, and then when you are away, end of story. So over time, people don't trust it. You need to have people's confidence because you are actually, you are, you are actually, you are actually leading them. So if it is them and us, if it is government about us, against us, you will not achieve the confidence. And if, if there's no confidence enough, then the country will, will be wobbling. According to what Charles Lindblom talked about, modeling right. through. Okay, you also see uh, ECOWAS Court orders amendment of Nigeria Press Council Act, Tunable Pledges, full university autonomy. So who knows? Is that going to put an end to industrial actions in courts? Uh, I guess time will tell. Wiki Fubara feud continues to put reverse on edge. Several other headlines on the front page, but that will be Daily Trust this morning. More drama, you can say. Well, New Telegraph, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> I'm taking New Telegraph because it has drama in one of its headlines. <laughs> and I think I'm rather oh, fascinated. Dear. I mean, what by now I should be able to write a whole poem of a drama. <laughs> or maybe even sing a song to it <laughs> at this rate. But well, take a look at what New Telegraph has for you this morning. Progressive politics dead. That's according to APC Chieftain. There's Ganduje playing politics of expulsion, opposition giving supporters false hope. That's according to APC in the Northwest. Uh, pages four and five is where you say it. If you're not seeing the drama directly now, just interchange politics with drama. The, the progressive drama, more or less. Progressive oh drama did. Well, I don't know what you make of this. I guess they're just making your point. Um, on the front page this morning, but this one is as relates to aviation safety. Um, I know I saw the story yesterday online, and it was quite hilarious. And I think it was, this is was almost how it was couched: drama as Abuja-bound aircraft lands in Asaba. I don't know if that if you came across that story. Airline attributes diversion to bad weather. Uh, page two is where you find details. So. I, from what we understand, though, the, the airline had told, or when they, when they landed in Asaba, uh, we understand that they confidently announced, I think the air hostess announced the passengers that they were now in Abuja. Oh, so, yes. So <laughs> I think people must have been wondering, Abuja how? This doesn't look like Abuja. Um, well, and, and you know, it, for people who may not understand some of this, is this morning, uh -huh. it was incredibly difficult. See for you to see the next car oh, yes. in front of you because oh, the yes. fog is so thick. You yes. could almost touch it. Yes. So I don't know the circumstance with which that scenario happened. Yeah. But probably, I mean, reading that and in my experience this morning, mm -hmm. probably I can relate. So to some extent, because I don't know the circumstance. Yes, I certainly can corroborate what it is that you're saying. I mean, Abuja has had a very weird situation with weather recently. I mean, this is the end of November and we thought, oh, rains were done. And then, yeah. kaboom, all of a sudden, <laughs> plenty of rain with thunderstorms oh, yeah. um, at the end of November. Yeah, the result this morning was very heavy fog. You could barely see 50 meters ahead of you. Uh, so maybe, because you can see right here, airlines attribute diversion to bad weather. But the question is, did the airlines actually tell the passengers that, oh, they were going to be diverting to our suburb? Because... From what we understand, some of the passengers said that it was announced that they had landed in Abuja. Or, or, maybe, or maybe they didn't hear correctly. Still drama. drama. <laughs> because if you tell the people the truth, if you don't act, drama means giving you, giving you another side of it. That is, I'm, on, I'm telling you I'm 10, meanwhile I'm 1. So they need to calm their nerves down. Do hmm. you know that if people get the wrong impression, they can start having convulsions, they can start having falling sick in the airplane. You tell them what they want to hear so that they don't even collapse. You don't even have, you don't even have casualties in, inside the plane. When they now come out and see that it's not Abuja, at least, they, they, at least you don't have casualties inside your own plane. Mm. So it is a drama. Tell them what they want to hear. That's what government does. Tell them toughest structure. 
No, so I'm, I'm not sure this is what they wanted to hear. It might have been an error. No, I mean, I don't, no I, is there I, any pilot, any air, airline that will go ahead and tell you what you want to hear when you landed in the wrong place? Let me tell you something. You know that. Uh, let me use this, this uh, analogy. Somebody loses his, his father or mother. You don't tell him. You say no. Don't worry. Your, your, your no, sister no, is not doing fine. That's a completely different scenario with this one. I'm giving you. Uh, calm down. Now, if people are in the plane, and you don't, you tell them they are not. They are not in Abuja. Somebody maybe has a, has an appointment in 10 minutes time in Abuja, maybe at the airport, and then he can he can collapse, he can fall sick, he can he, he, he can he can have hypertension, high BP. So and if the person has a high BP in your, in your, in your, in your aircraft and dies there, you pay damages, you you, you go into trouble. So tell him make him to come out of the plane first, and then if if, if you commit offense, if you commit suicide or becomes depressed outside, you are not liable. So no. tell him what they want to hear. Well, I, I don't think. Well, at, at least they were saying. I, I think that all of the passengers at least were safe. I'm sure whatever it was was eventually corrected, and uh, hopefully the passengers eventually landed in um, Abuja. I'm sure it's headlines we're looking at, guys. You know, <laughs> it's the headlines. Do not run away with the headlines. Look to page two to get the full details of the story, because for such a story, I mean, diversions happen all of the time. The question is, why did he make it to the front page of New Telegraph this morning? It's because something really, really odd must have happened with this situation. So page two will give you details, uh, just in case you're wondering as to why it's right there. Uh, the Abuja Enquirer, is there a way we will do... Abuja Enquirer, does it have anything on the fog? <laughs> uh, it came up before, it put it back before the fog. And, and the weather. But look, kidnapping, FCTA lists worst hit councils plan security review so for those of us residents in abuja you might want to know whether your uh, council area falls under one of these areas and what to do about it but this is it kidnapping fcta list worst hit councils plan security review you had a conversation with the minister on friday and uh, I'm, I'm sure security must also have come up yeah. there but take a look at this refining will begin Maybe this one will fall on that drama. Refining will begin with 350,000 barrels per day in December. As she returned to Dangote, uh, this, is, this one, I don't know if this is what we want to hear. <laughs> you can't tell me people will spend that amount of money. You tell them you have to spend that money for drama. No. For drama? No. <laughs> drama no. No, they have, we have been hearing about <laughs> when this refinery will start trembling. At least that part is dramatic, you must admit. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, huh? Business day before we wrap up quickly. Uh, and this is big story. Rising drug prices squeeze health insurers' margins. Healthcare providers ask HMOs for tariff reviews. We're going to have to get, get back to the Ministry of Finance because these are issues that affect human lives. Uh, and it's a very serious matter. So uh, I don't think there should be any drama close to all of this one because it affects <laughs> lives and pro uh, human lives there. So this is really, really important, and then they need to also take a look at it. That's how we end the look at some of the dailies here this morning. Uh, Dr. Ben Omudinjo, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much, and God bless you. All right, we're back in a moment. Stay on with us.